Timely have very kindly trusted me with their Facebook channel on a Wednesday night, one month a week, which is very nice of them. Right. It's like giving a child a toy. It is. I'm the same though. I'm the same. So, hey, we're both, we're both the same. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. What, what's going to happen? Let's just see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Watching this, Jazz and I, are, like, she's one of my best friends. We are very close. And so if you hear us throwing insults at each other, it's all out of love. Um, that's just the way we are. It's just, it's just how we roll. In fact, we've had many Christmases together, many birthdays together. I've known you for 10 plus years, which is longer than I care to admit. Um, so it's awesome. Guys, uh, welcome to the Timely Facebook page. Uh, I would love like to introduce my very good friend, Ray Morris. If you don't know who she is, you've been living under a rock. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just going to like be a little bit weird and just do a bit of PR and fluff right now, Ray, because I know that like people just need to be amazed by you as much as I have been amazed by you since I've known you. So, Ray. Stop it, Dad. Stop it. No, keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> keep going. Use more adjectives. Um, Let's relax. <laughs> Ray is a three times makeup artist four. winner. Four. Oh, I didn't even realize it was four. And I it was you. <laughs> and how many books is it now? I, I lost count. <laughs> no, six. Six books, a brush range that she has continued to work on. And oh, like, I still have your original brushes. Like the quality of what you've created is truly incredible. Um, along with many, many years of education. I believe, and I don't know if other people would agree with me, but I believe you are responsible for many, many successful artists in this country today. So I am very honoured and I feel really lucky that you agreed to do this with me. I know that we're friends, but I also know that you have an incredibly busy work life. So, Well, Jazz, um, all I heard was, Ray, can you? And I went, yes. Yeah. <laughs> all you have to do, Jazz. Anything for you. <laughs> So, um, Ray, the people that follow Timely are their customers. So who we're speaking to tonight are people who use Timely to book in um, clients for beauty therapists, hairdressers, makeup artists, um, and that sort of thing. So I would like to chat to you about, your, about makeup tips and tricks, maybe a couple of things around some business stuff. and Because sure. um, I really think that will appeal and be enlightening to the people who are following the timely world so hit me hit me, Ask me. Uh, uh, so, so, no. Haley Lee has just commented saying I love her original brushes and they are why I can do a perfect smoky eye oh, I love you that is so awesome we've changed the hair now we have a MCF hair which is a patented hair um and it's so incredible because it actually mimics um, natural hair fiber. So instead of, because the problem with a lot of synthetic brushes is they don't have the ability, they can, they're great for cream products, but the, because they're synthetic with powders, they pick them up unevenly and they just dump them on the face. They don't have the prosody to hold a product. So I know a lot of people go, oh no, it's not natural hair, but it's actually better than natural hair now. So, um, but that's such a nice thing to hear. So thank you so much. I can't see the comments. So if there's any questions you want to throw at me, just go for it. I will do my best to um, keep an eye on the comments if I can. Um, speaking about brushes, I'm going to ask you a question about product, um, creating product, because mm -hmm. people always say to me, they're like, Jazz, you should do brow products. It'll be amazing. I'm like, do you know? Do you know what goes into launching, creating and developing a product? I know it's something you could talk about for ages, but what, what is the reality of launching and creating your own product? Do you okay. Um, this is like, okay, I'll give you an idea. So, because a lot of people out there do have really great ideas. And look, I my heart goes out to a lot of great creators because they have these great ideas, but unless they have the money behind it, uh, the R&D, the team, it's, it is really hard to watch. I'll give you an idea. Like I did um, an invisible mattifier, which I have. Now that took two years to get it stable. Um, so the cost is over just to get it stabilized was in the six figure amount. That's not even to have a product. And then you have things called MOQs. So minimum orders. So most factories, good ones, even the smaller factories, a minimum 
um, MOQ on something is 5,000. So let's say you want to bring out an eyebrow powder. So there's a way you've got to think of it. If it already exists in the world, you've got to think, well, how many other people have exactly the same product? Are you going to be bringing out something that everyone else has? How do you make yourself different in this world where there's so much product already? So let's say you go to Italy and you find this brow powder that you haven't designed yourself. It already exists. Um, you have to then design your packaging, then your secondary packaging, and then you also have to get licensing and TGA approval. So if you claim something, so if you, if you claim this brow product will make your brow hairs thicker because you've made a claim, it now has to have different licensing for different countries. Ugh. And then, so just the legal part of that is 50 grand plus, just the legals. Um, then you have to do um, all your branding. So you can do it yourself. I wouldn't always recommend it. It's like your logos, how it sits, how it fits. Um, tooling, if you want to change the existing packaging. And then if you change packaging, that can be up to two years, which it was for me and my powder to get something stabilized. So if you see something and you go, I want to produce that, put my name on it, but you want to change the lid, you have to test that product with that lid for two years. Um, and then minimum orders. I mean, to be honest, if you want to bring out one lipstick, I, we've done this pricing. So if you want to do bring out one lipstick for your range, you're looking at minimum spend 80 grand. That's for a bottom line, basic, no branding in a box. Um, yeah, it might cost you $2 to make her lipstick, but it's 80 grand. Min that's like bottom end. And with lipsticks, you rarely bring out one. So you're looking at so when you see a product launch, I get really, you know, when I see younger artists or smaller businesses do it, I'm like, good on you. You've had to get a loan. Someone's had to give you the money because I know it's a hundred grand, two year waiting list to even get something from your thought to market. So it's not easy, not easy at all. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> and I wish in saying that though, I really wish together, give me an idea. To find a community, we should we should see if Tanya can help us do this, is maybe help support younger, smaller brands because, you know, the power these big brands have, you know, I mean, I designed a lipstick. It was a world's first of its kind. It was an ombre lipstick. It was my idea. You remember this, Jazz. And it was sitting in Italy in this amazing, you know, manufacturer. And YSL, um, people from YSL saw this lipstick and it was taken from me because I didn't have the $8 million in whatever it costs to, I'm making that figure out, but it was in the millions that I had to have to fight it. I'm like, you know, it's too hard, but wouldn't it be great that we can just support smaller brands? Then would be a great idea. So what was the longest answer to that no, question? No, <laughs> you know what? I'm glad because I, I really, I see how much work goes into what you do and I don't think other people fully... Mm -hmm. um appreciate what it takes to launch anything of any kind um i mean the book oh the book oh okay the book, the book. The last book that you wrote um yeah. and published was is is absolutely incredible and it was years of work yeah um i won't give people the exact number but i'll give you what it's above for me to print that so to do this book to shoot this book now the photographer didn't um he was amazing we he donated his cost to charity i donated my time of course it's my book um just to print this book just the printing cost was three hundred thousand dollars um and we did that we mortgaged our house um, we actually had our parents in law help us as well to do it um the cost of that book if you were to go out and recreate this and this is just at it for the art direction the models you're talking close to a million dollars. Um, people, again, I mean, I did it at the highest end and I had so many people that got behind me behind me, and, and you know, they offered time up front that we paid as we sold books. So, yeah, it's, it's a real, I mean, it's obviously, you know, there's people that can do it a lot cheaper, but, you know, it took me two years to, to do. The first few books I had a publisher, so luckily they took on those expenses. But a book's a hundred grand up to a million dollars to to do a book. It's just insane. Yeah, it's it's yeah. so intense. Um, Haley Lee uh, is asking um, about what book that is. Oh. It's her. It was the last book she published. Uh, hang on, Ray will pick it up. There you go. Like just just so just the stamping. Like that was a sixty thousand dollar added expense to do gold. You know, it's just the money that you spend and you have to do minimum prints. Um, but yeah, this one, the printing, we did on German paper. 
Um, the art design, the art direction in it was incredible. Every single photo, everything I did myself. So um, there's nothing I outsourced. But every photo you see, even the Pantone color charts, the illustrator, we had an amazing illustrator as well. Um, but yeah, it's an expensive thing. So, you know, I really get touched and moved when people do these things on their own because I know what it takes to do it. It's not easy. Um, I just smile and go, yay, this is great. No one has any idea how much, how much work goes into something sometimes. I, I see how much work you do and I see it's not luck. Like, no. You, I mean, you still do test shoots. You're still testing with, I mean, granted, you're testing with the best people in the country, but you are still testing. You are still all together collaborating on a photo shoot that will make you zero money. Always. Um, and, and I'm I, never going to wait for the client, a client to go, yeah, I'll pay you to put glitter all over someone's face and shoot them in a bright yellow upside down shirt against a wall under a water fountain. That's never going to happen. And the thing about when you do these shoots for free, you're showing the world who you are as an artist without restriction. Um, but also in saying that though, Jazz, lately, if you have a look at my little Instagram feed, I've been shooting with a lot of up and coming photographers. I'm just like, you know what, let's just do this. Let's give some young blood a chance um and i feel there's um because there's so much on social media now um in the art world that i feel a lot of the new talent are getting exposed to so much more inspiration like we i used to buy italian vogues and you know my five magazines and off i went and now it's interesting when i see a lot of the younger and i'm not saying age younger you could have you could be 70 and be photographing uh, for the first time but I, I'm finding talent is extraordinary um, in a lot of up-and-coming new artists so I'm really I'm really I mean a stylist reach out to me today and I, I would normally go well how have you who have you worked with what have you done and the thing is that that's the thing with Instagram now like your page is your portfolio and I went yeah there's some talent in there and because we're all collaborating if it doesn't work it's okay like if it doesn't work it doesn't matter just go, okay I learned something didn't yeah. work it's my time. Move on. Up to experience. Um, yeah. I remember years years ago when I first met you. When I one of the best pieces of advice you ever gave me is if you're ever working on a photo shoot as a makeup artist, hairdresser, get get just get the first shot with just barely anything. Like just mm -hmm. a little bit of coverage, star up, put the brow up, gloss the lip, chuck her in front of the camera because if everything else turns to you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, will more, yeah. <laughs> you will more than likely get a single great shot and it will be that and I tell you what I have done that every shoot and I've ended up with amazing photos that I can still use today because yeah aging yeah keeping something timeless is um and it's what you don't do and sometimes I always find if I'm shooting you know with a new crew or I'm a bit nervous because there's some rock star on set I do get very I get nervous every shoot and um it takes me time to warm up sometimes and I find it takes less pressure I just make the skin amazing and sometimes it's, you, you, you're showing people your taste and I think when you have a beautiful girl if you've got say you've got some of the amazing skin don't put foundation on her mm -hmm. because you're trying you need to show the world what you think beauty is like you've got to show what you believe good skin should look like so it's not you should so the way you got to think of it is not taking good skin and showing this is what foundation looks like on good skin but with you like Something I love with you, Jazz, like you, if you see a beautiful brow, it's a beautiful brow and you'll, it, it's, you, you're you showing the world what you think beauty is. So like if you get a girl who's got the nat most natural, incredible brows and great skin, I would just put moisturizer on it and put it in front of a camera, even with no makeup on. I mean, some of my biggest jobs I've gotten because I've put, I've had images with no makeup and the client has said to me, that it spoke volumes because it showed what I think beautiful is. And I went, oh, I didn't quite think of it like that. Um, so yeah, and, and having the model with no makeup or little makeup, it also, I get to look at angles, how lighting works, what kind of lighting, because, you know, I, I always pretend to understand still to this day when photographers go on about all their lighting they're going to use. And I go, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Yeah, and you're going to use the hddefinition.com, great. And I just go, well, what the hell is that? I'll just look at it and see what it does. And then I'll work my makeup around that. That's how I work that out. <laughs> but although you may not know the technical side of it, you can look at a shot and go, 
no, nah, buddy, that's not working. Stop doing that. You need to think <laughs> how you fix not it. Not worded quite like that, but yes. <laughs> You're much fun. <laughs> photographer, absolutely. You can boss them around a little bit. <laughs> um, Jessica has asked, because she's a bit of a fan, Hi, um, yes. she watches your interview collaboration stuff with Trini from London. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah Trini, you never know where that's going to go. <laughs> how, how how did you come to meet Trini and start doing those? Okay, so that's kind of funny. So Trini and Susanna came to Australia for a Westfield tour and I was booked for it. And I did Susanna's makeup first, opened the door, never forget, she was completely naked. I'm talking no underwear, completely naked. Her room looked like, oh my God, like a rock and roll star from the 80s. And yet it was seven in the morning. And she was hilarious and I loved her so much. And Sarah Laidlaw, amazing friend of ours, was doing hair. And then I finished her and I went, I've got to go next door and do Trini. And I remember walking next door, opening the door. Trini had 17 layers of face masks, a yoga mat, every product in OCD like you'd never seen before, everything unpacked in coloured order, sitting in a chair with all her oils out. And I'm like, okay. And she just sat there and I, I got really intimidated and I was so scared. And I'm doing her face and she's like, mm -hmm, not saying anything. And then she was, I don't know what it was, but she, I think it was just this moment of you better do a good job because I'm back to go on TV and I've had good people do my face. And I remember I was really scared and she got a camera and I can't remember what it was. But it was something like there was this moment she looked at me and she went, oh, you're good. And I went, okay. And then it was just from that moment. And then we just got on. So Trini's one of these women that everyone loves her, but she, she, I don't know, there's, she can be really quiet and distant because she can, or she can just be blah. And we just got on like a house on fire. And then with makeup, we, she was so obsessed with makeup like I am. And that's all we talked about. So I remember even back in the day, she used to stack, like all the stacks she used to do. And I, that's where I think her range has come from. Um, and she's taught me a lot about fashion and she's told me never to wear black. And I haven't quite learnt that. But um, yeah, so we're actually friends. She helped me through IVF. Um, she's like been very open and she was with me through those really tricky, hard times, as were you, Jazz. Um, so yeah, we're actual friends with people that hang out. She was actually meant to come to my wedding, but because of long, boring story. Um, yeah, so we're actually personal friends. So that's why I love her so much. I, I mean, you invited me to her makeup launch here in Sydney. And yeah, I, of course. I super pumped. She put makeup on my face. I had a sweaty top lip ray. Like, I nearly died when Trini of London was patting my sweaty lip. I was like, just someone kill me right now. <laughs> but isn't she? She's fab. She's pretty fab. I, and I remember at the end, there was just four of us, and she just sat with us, and we just talked whatever for, like, anything and everything. She's just a, she's a really good woman. She's incredible. You are um, you are actually the reason I have celebrity clients. I I'm you are the reason I met Paula Abdul and Jessica Malboy and Samantha Harris. And your celebrity client base is huge. But I just don't invite. I just don't go. Hey, this is Jazz. Meet my friend. Like you actually make me look good. <laughs> Like seriously, Jessica, we love Jessica. Our, one of my favorite humans in the world. But her brows, man, they're so they are so hard. They're so hard because they grow down. And I actually use Prose to get them up for shoots. I just have to get glue into them. I just have to. But no one does a brow like you. Like, so I know there's, so, I just can't explain what it is. Like, I've never had a brow artist that they get their brows. And I've always have to do something on the day, either light and dark and add this length of it. Yours, yours always are better than what I expect. Because I go, oh, I can do this, but I don't know what it is that you do that they come to me and they, and I go, and I, I'll make this G rated, but I was just say, how did she do that? Like, how did she, she had three hairs. How is that possible? So I know you think it's just me being a friend, but actually you helped me out big time. Well, you're, so, you're extraordinary. Your brow works extraordinary. Oh my God. There's no one like you. There's no one. You don't even have a backup. I don't have a backup for you. My head is just getting bigger. Like, this is my head right now. It's just like taking up all the <laughs> Um, what's it, what's it like working with celebrities? Are you just used to it now? No. And that, you know what it is? I love this question because I'm sure the answer is not what most people think. I'm terrified and it's nothing to do with the celebrity. There's a little bit of excitement. Like I get excited by pure talent. I'm never excited by someone 
who's a celebrity for, you know, licking an ice cream, I don't know, I don't know doing something random. Um, but like singers, I mean, I get some, singers, dancers, I get really inspired by um, talent, like real talented people. But um, what freaks me out, there's a lot of things. One, they're always under such time pressure. So it's not, you don't get that bit of bonding time it's in set up you're normally even setting up in their in their space or in their room um so it's just where can you go can you use the toilet it's all these rules you don't know what exists so you've got 30 seconds to work that out they like to be touched they like to be spoken did you not speak to you and then so you've got all that and then the biggest thing is the bigger the celebrity i know the bigger makeup artist um has done their face so for example pink like when I worked with her, Pat McGrath had just done her. I think it was the, I think she, not, it wasn't the Mac campaigns before she had a range. She shot her for, oh, it was at May, Maybelline, something, I can't remember. But she did her makeup like three days before. And, you know, um, and I knew Lisa Eldridge and Charlotte Tilbury and all these great, like best of the best artists. So, and I'm sitting in that lineup. And, you know, so like when I get these big, like Daryl Hannah, um, Cindy Lauper, um, Kelly Rowland, I just know, they know their face. They get their faces done every day by the best. They know their shit. So, you know, even if an eyeliner is slightly too thick, they'll, they'll just, they know their faces so well. And you don't really get a test time. Um, yeah, so that's what makes it, chat like it's excitement but it's also nerves I feel sick in my stomach until I've got it right and if they like me oh my god and when they do like it it's like I'm the happiest person because I am also now being compared to some of the greatest artists so yeah, yeah. I, I feel that I am gonna name drop like a champion but um I, I hold my it. breath yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm always, I think I, I get nervous still today with every, when a brand new client walks in the door and I'm like, yeah. please love me. Uh, <laughs> I know, same. Yeah. I know, it's just, it's trauma babies, you know, it's like, love, love, because well, you know what it is, I think where we're similar, we feel everything or nothing. So we're so sensitive, like so, and it's, it's actually, it's a great thing to have, but then I think people also pick up that we're sensitive and they like the fact they've got someone they can go blah to, but when you've had a hundred people go blah to you in a week, and then you've still got to focus on your job, it gets a little, it, it, it's tough. And I think everyone in the beauty industry can definitely, um, vouchers. And, and, and as we know in our industry too, in the service industry, it's always about how you make someone feel. That's what they remember. So even if you're not the best at what you do, they'll remember how you made them feel. And that's, that's what I mean, you're, luckily you've got both jazz. Yeah. <laughs> how you make someone feels actually a bit more important than your skill. I I completely agree. I, yeah. I completely agree with that. Um, Haley Lee was asking, she's got two questions. Yeah. How are you still having people work for you as an assistant? How can people assist you in <laughs> Sydney? Okay, so I just got a, a full-time assistant. Her name is Hunter Franks. So she's sitting in the other room. Um, and she has been amazing. But I do have assistants all the time. I have like a full-time her. She's full-time. But when I'm doing my editorial shoots, I do invite other artists to come on board. Um, and Jazz, maybe, I mean, you know how this kind of works. I mean, for me, look, I get 100 people probably a week asking. But what I... I, there's emails that do definitely stand out. They're ones that aren't just copying, pasting. Um, there's ones that email you but don't expect replies. And it is consistent because I, I mean, I've got um, assistants who I've promised to come on shoots probably for the next month. I mean, with COVID, it's changed a bit right now. So if you email me now and I don't respond now, it doesn't mean I won't have you or I just can't do it now. And so there's good, you've got to be persistent. Um, polite um kind in your emails i like kind people um and yeah i think persistence is a really nice thing but also not emailing with hi um the long i mean i always say this when when you're talking to busy people get straight to the point because if, if i get an overwhelming lifelong story sometimes it's like oh do you want to assist me or not um yeah, and just straight to the point and do emails that you don't need to make massive responses. So I love emails when people go, this is my Instagram. I can do this, do that, do this. I can't do makeup, but I have OCD or I have a car. I live here. Um, I'm very good at cleaning brushes because 
obviously on shoots ready makeup. Just short, sweet, straight to the point, little photos. So if I've got 17 Haley's emailing me, I know which one you are. And you'll be surprised every assistant I've ever had has just emailed me a couple of times, nice emails, boom, right date. And that's how I think all of them have come about. But most people email you once, they never email back again. And I'm like, well, if you don't want to persist a little bit, maybe you're not ready for it. I know it's, it's overwhelming. It's nerve wracking, but I'm nice. Yeah, it is. It's un, like my inbox is full 24 seven. I just have like a continual thing that says, I'll get back to you when I can. And if someone get his back from me within two weeks, like it's a, yeah, it's a miracle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a fluffy but, miracle. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Haley, I, um, as someone who did harass Ray 10 years ago, I can confirm, don't be shy, send consistent emails every yeah. few weeks if you must, yeah. short and concise. Hi, Ray, saw you on Timely, would love to assist you. I can do, yeah. I do makeup, I do hair, I can clean your brushes, I can do great nails, I have my own car, Yeah, I'm there if you need me, don't forget about me. Right. He won't reply, that's fine. Yeah. The email went through three weeks later. Hey, Ray, just a reminder, no, no pressure to respond. Would love to assist you. Yeah. And if you've got any work, like chuck it on, but it's, it's more about yeah. just being there in the right time. So Being able to just, have, yeah. And like you said there, in those moments, no need to respond. It just shows that not that I'm, I'm not, I'm just trying to train younger artists that you're the people that stand out. Like agencies tell me all the time, they'll just get bombarded with, you know, sure, I want to assist someone but they it's not and and then they get an email where they just copy and paste like it's you know and that can be seemed a bit rude it's like no it's just those little tiny things you know you don't need to reply because when I see that I go oh that's really considerate I will reply to you so it's but also you can ha harass Hunter because Hunter actually Hunter Franks um she organizes my assistance so she's also a key can people contact you on Instagram and Hunter will take care of it yep Excellent. Um, Haley also asked about the ratio of phi and how to learn about it, but it's in your book, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's kind of a long, I know we've only got like uh, a minute left, but all I get you to do, everyone, go and Google the science of beauty. There's actually a science to beauty. Um, they use it to teach plastic surgeons all around the world. There is, um, it's actually been built in our brains that we find things that measure far more attractive. So just Google the golden ratio or the Fibonacci sequence and how it applies to beauty. And maybe we need to do a part two because it's how I apply it to makeup in everything I do. And I did look, I did do a massive chapter in a book, but I don't want to sound like I'm doing a shameless plug. Oh, I know, but um, yeah. it was the quickest answer I could get. Yeah. <laughs> um, Haley, I just, I learned about Fire through Ray and also through Googling as well. Yeah. Um, it was, it's, it's a great thing to have in the back of your mind to understand. Look, we do have only, I probably should sign it out, but I'm going to be really cheeky. Five uh, favorite foundation at the moment. I still, I, go, oh, oh, I, I love Kojendo, the Japanese one that is continuing it. What am I loving? What am I loving? Oh, God, God, God. Um, let me think. Favorite foundation. Um, I'm loving the Dior, the glow and glass okay. bottle. Something glow. It's beautiful. Yep. Yeah, really nice. But you know what? A great cheap alternative, L'Oreal True Match. Yeah, it's really good. It's really nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Great color range. That's awesome. And if people want to learn from you, how can they learn from you? If they're well, just everyday individuals or professionals? Well, I do train privately. It is a bit crazy and tricky right now. So if you just go to my website, ray um, at raymorris.com, um, and it depends on, like, we can cater to kind of what you, I do train privately. It's a bit harder to track me down, but I do do that. Um, look, I did do an online masterclass, but that was all done more of a live thing, but we are, um, shortening that down and, and like my YouTube stuff is starting to grow again. So please check out my YouTube and my IGTVs and like every week we're putting, um, educational videos up there. Um, so yeah, I am now that I'm having more of a lockdown with COVID, it's given me time to really go through all my um, education, all my tutorials and just give as much education as I can. Because I think it's a time now where we just got to get better at what we do. So when all this shit is over, we're yeah. better armed and better prepared to be better artists on the other side. Which quickly reminds me, I've started a thing called Ray Morris Talent. Hashtag us today. I announced it today. 
So what I want to do is because I've got like 100,000, you know, it's a big number, it's getting good, but I've got some amazing followers on my platform. Like I've got clients, models, agents, people, you, people in the industry. And I thought there's so many amazing up and coming talented people who get no recognition, who people don't, maybe not. I've seen talent in people that they never even thought they were that talented. So I thought if you can hashtag either you or someone you think is really talented, every Friday, I'm just going to announce it and put your photos onto my platform to share you. And I just want to encourage everyone to, which you did, Jazz, I announced one last week. Um, and I think, remember, I think, yeah, yeah, you did. And you went and followed. And I thought that's a really nice thing to do for artists to let's support each other. Like not this competition. It's like, we are all in this together. Let's help each other out. I'm in a position now where I can give love back. I can train. I believe in, as I grow, I bring people with me. Um, so yeah, hashtag Ray Morris talent. That hashtag Ray Morris talent on Instagram and you'll start highlighting. Yeah, any, but highlight the pages that you were like your photos you want to submit. So it's either your work or someone else's work you think talent and emerging talent. I'm not looking for that really typical heavy Instagram mm. socket thing. I just feel that it's not my aesthetic anyway. And it's, and I, and it's too retouched. Most of those images are so retouched that I, I can't see talent through all that post work um but yeah so it, it just can be like I'm looking for even simple things like it's a beautiful eyeliner or it's a brow that's been done beautifully I can see talent you know pretty easily even it's on makeup on yourself doesn't matter that is awesome I feel like I should have asked you more makeup questions or more how-to questions but I think people are just going to have to stalk you and find you do we have a time limit, right? Do we have to cut off? Are we done? No, they won't cut us off, but it, it will get to the point where people are like, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> hey, just quickly, what is one of the most ageing things women do to their face with makeup? Um, shimmer. Shimmer and highlighting, yeah. Even those highlighting primers, it's like fish scales. It makes the skin really wrinkly. A great test if you ever want to use shimmer or highlighters on your skin. Just don't use it where the area is lined or if you've got pores or scarring. It just, it just, it actually makes the skin look like fish scales. You just got to keep that away. So, um, yeah, nothing shimmery, especially around the eye area. Um, and also pinky beigey foundations are really aging as well. Something that's a bit surprising is, and you know this as well, Jazz, we're, we're the same here. I don't use pinky beigey foundations. Even if you're pink toned, I still use more neutral, slightly warm color foundations because it just takes that ashy pinkiness out of the skin. Because when you make the skin pinky and beige, it actually photographs two shades paler, sometimes more. It can be quite aging. Um, yeah, so anything shimmer, even like glittery metallic lipsticks, all that's really aging. So just keep away from anything shimmer. Anything shimmer. Just chill yeah. out. You do not need to be seen from the moon. Yeah. Um, that is awesome. Actually, the Timely people have posted your Instagram account and the post about the makeup artist that you... Oh, Ray Morris talent. Great. Yeah. And by the way, there is a singer called Ray Morris, just yeah. so you know. I do get her... I get. I got a message last night about a sound check. Apparently, she's, apparently I sounded awesome on stage. So that's great. So her and I started to in a funny way, swap each other. She's like trying to answer makeup questions. So I'm trying to answer singing <laughs> questions. They just make, yeah, there is a Ray Morris singer, but Ray as an R-E-E, Ray Morris talent, hashtag. Amazing. If people want to buy your brushes and books, how do we do that? It's raymorris.com. Um, everything's on the website. And then there's Mecca as well in Australia. Depends where you are. We have distributors. We have Netta Porter, Cult Beauty, um, but you can come to us and then we can help divert, you know, it'll show you all the links on the website. Um, but yeah, raymorris.com is the easiest way for everything. Awesome. Okay, I will leave it there. Thank, Thank you so you much for joining me in lockdown. I was actually secretly hoping that I could get you to put makeup on my face, but COVID had other ideas. Yeah, I know. Um, but uh, you're a legend. I freaking love you. I'm so grateful to have you as a friend in my life. And um, and I can't believe you went swimming today in one degree weather. Oh, my God. That's another conversation. What oh, is your crazy, man? I've been ocean swimming like a champion, but uh, I keep getting knocked out by waves and getting myself nearly killed. So, but again, that's a story for another day. <laughs> that's why your skin's so glowy. <laughs> All that cold water, ice bath. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a lovely evening. Thanks, Thanks Jess. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye.